A new paper has analyzed the DNA of the Kalash tribe. Well, the paper is recent, but it took me a while to decide whether or not I should make this video. But here I am, so let's begin. So for those who do not know about the Kalash tribe, the Kalash are a small ethnic group living in the three valleys of Chitral, northern Pakistan. They follow an ancient polytheistic religion and celebrate nature-based festivals. Their culture is unique with colorful clothes, music, and traditional dances. They speak the Kalasha language, which is a part of the Indo-Aryan language family, and some believe they are the descendants of Alexander the Great or Macedonians. They are a protected minority and one of the last non-Muslim groups in the region. Now let us get back to the topic and discuss what the paper tells about them. The researchers studied 98 individuals for white DNA and 71 individuals for autosomal DNA markers. And the final results paint a very interesting picture. So let us start with the white DNA. The Kalash people show an overwhelming presence of Neolithic male lineages. About 77% of their white DNA belongs to clades associated with early Neolithic Iranian farmers and the Neolithic people from the Fertile Crescent. More specifically, the haplogroups they had were R2, G2A2, J2B2A, and L1C. These haplogroups make about 77% of their white DNA. But if we include J2A1, which is another related lineage, this number jumps to 85%, so they are overwhelmingly related to the early Neolithic Iranians and Fertile Crescent people. They also have the step-related haplogroup R1AZ93, but the frequency of that haplogroup is just 2% in the Kalash people. If they truly were the most preserved step descendants, their R1A frequencies should be way higher. The Kalash people practice an archaic Indo-Aryan-like religion and have avoided mixing with foreign tribes for hundreds of years, so their genetic profile wasn't changed by other populations living around that region. They also have a pre-Neolithic South Asian lineage, the haplogroup H1, which makes about 7% of their white DNA. The population genetic structure was analyzed using 22 autosomal STRs. A structure bar plot using an admixture model with the best fit revealed distinct clusters for each individual genotype. The Kalash people stood out as genetically distinct from the neighboring groups. However, a few individuals showed more genetic similarity to people from Gilgit, Baltistan and even the Caucasus. A previous study by Ayub et al. said that the Kalash people had no detectable gene flow from their neighbors or any other Eurasian group for over 8,000 years and that they were in complete isolation. But this contradicts with another study from Helenthal et al. because they found signs of DNA mixing between 910 and 220 BCE. They said that the source of this DNA looked similar to modern-day West Asians and Europeans from places like Austria, Germany or Anatolia. The strong presence of Neolithic Y-DNA groups shows that the Kalash are closely related to ancient populations from the Fertile Crescent in the Near East. This area, including ancient civilizations in Mesopotamia and the Indus Valley, played a big role in early human history. It seems likely that the Kalash people's ancestors came from this fertile crescent region during the Neolithic era, probably traveling along a Mediterranean route. After settling in their current homeland, they became isolated and preserved their unique genetic makeup until today. In my opinion, the 910-220 BCE admixture of West Eurasian European-like group is possibly either through Scythians or the Greeks, because it also aligns with the average date of steppe admixture in South Asian populations, which is around 800 BCE to 1000 BCE. What if it is true that these isolated tribes are related to the Hellenic Macedonians who came with Alexander? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. That's all for this video. See you next time. Goodbye.